Greetings and salutations. Today's project is going to be Puke Tank 2.0. Let me pull this apart so you can see what my plan here is. So I cut this in half, got this ring, these two rings here. One will get welded to the bottom half, and the other one will get welded to the top half. So this is the top half, right? And I took some, uh, I think this is 16 gauge and made a, a, a lip that slides down into the lower half. And I put this, uh, welded this little ring in here. So here's the inlet and I opened up the outlet. This piece isn't long enough, but I got more over there in the corner. Inch and a quarter tubing. That'll go in there and it'll go down probably, well, probably that far in the bottom. This is what I'm going to be using for media for this oil to uh, collect on. I've got some copper coated scrubbing pads and, and some stainless scrubbing pads. These are just pot scrubbers. So I got a whole bunch of these. I think I bought, how many did I buy here? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's three in each one. So that's 13 times three carry to four. That's almost 40, 39 of these scrunchies, they'll go in there, kind of like that. Of course, I'll take them out of the packaging. And I have this. This is just a grill topper. Yeah, a little, little aluminum thing. And I'll cut, I'll cut this to fit in here and around that pipe. And I'll probably take, where'd that ring go? I'll probably take this and cut the center out of it so that there's a hole in the middle that uh, the oil can dribble through. And then I'll drill this, tap that, get some fasteners and screw them into there. And with this pipe sticking out the top like that, I'll put a, like an automotive valve cover breather in here. I'll find a way. I think right now what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna take my dead blow hammer uh, looks like it's lined up. Make sure that's seated all the way and then I'm going to weld these rings on, get these welded on, and then I'll go from there. Some of you might be asking, why am I going through all this trouble? The reason I'm building this to begin with is because I had a, a seal go bad in my power steering pump. And the power steering system is a closed oiling system that used uses 15W40 motor oil. And it bolts onto the back of the air compressor of my 83 Cummins diesel. Well, that's that little lip seal that separates that closed system from the closed system in the oiling in the engine that failed and allowed motor oil to leak out of the power steering system and into the crankcase, which overfilled the crankcase. And then the engine pumped that oil out through the vent tube on the top of the valve cover onto the ground and when it, when it dropped out of the vent tube and hit the airstream, it coated the underside of the bus. And then when it got to the back of the bus where there's a negative pressure at all that oil and, and now it's, you know, particleized and aerosolized and it coats the back of the bus and it coated the back of my, or it coated the front of the truck that was towing. And so my thought process, once I fixed that, I, I thought, well, if it ever happens again, I don't want all this oil in the environment. I want to capture it so that I can at least recycle it. So I had this air tank laying around that wasn't being used and I turned it into a puke tank, thinking that if any oil got pumped out of the vent tube, it would collect in here. Never dawned on me that a lot of the oil that's coming out of that vent tube is vaporized. It's, it's a blow by that's getting pumped out of the engine and that oil is in suspension and as soon as it hits something that it can condense on, that's where the oil is going to fall out of suspension and it's going to dribble 
onto whatever it is, whether it's the air, the airstream that's cooler and it condenses there, or on a surface that's at the dew point temperature. In this case, there was a little filter element that was on the end of this thing here, and that's where the oil came out of suspension as soon as it hit that filter, and then it would run down here and ultimately ending up all over the front of my Jeep. I don't like that kind. Uh, brainstormed with my buddy Martin, and uh, we looked at a couple of different uh, high-end um, oil catch cans that you'd find in a race car, and this is kind of what we came up with. So um, that's what I'm building today. Well, it's going to take a little longer today because I don't have all the things that I need to do this, but I can get a good jump on it anyway. So what I've done so far is I cut the tank in half. I, I did those things I just showed you to the upper part of the tank. And uh, now I'm going to weld this ring on and then we'll go from there. So I think for this outer ring, I'll, I'll go get some grade eight, uh, probably one inch and some nylock nuts for this ring. Do an RTV seal on this just to keep the oil from dribbling out the sides. Okay, that's all I'm doing tonight. Um, maybe tomorrow or Monday. I'll uh, go to the parts store tomorrow. I think I'll look for a breather. And then I need to make this ring. Hold this piece in. I'll work on that tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Well, hello. All right, so next day, and this is what I've come up with. I made this ring. That'll get screwed down. Over top of that, right? So that'll get screwed down in there. And then all this stuff will go inside of there. And this is the top. If I take one of these scrubbers and pull it apart, you can see it's just, you know, it's like little springs. Boing, 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 boing. I take one of these apart. and unfurl it and that's what it looks like well let me put this thing together and i'll show you the the finished result at least the top half i'll show you the top half put together and and kind of give you an idea of where i'm coming from <laughs> Thank you.
Alright. So this is how these things come apart. Last few runs I've been cutting them in half or cutting them down, splitting them. To make a like a sheet. Just like so. So that's what that looks like. I filled it up pretty good, actually. Take that piece. Uh, once this is screwed in, then the only place that the oil can come through is right here. And if it does happen to uh, wick over to the edge, it'll it'll uh, drip out at this edge. Hopefully, it won't make it all the way to here because I don't want it. I don't want the oil to uh, to you know get out. You know, it shouldn't because this is all going to be RTV'd. Let me get this screwed down and uh, show you what that looks like. Where are my screws? Here they are. So let me get that screwed down. Ah, broke it, son of a... That's less than ideal. Broke my tip. I should never need to take those off. Not that I, I can't think of a reason why I would be, have to take those off. So here's the bottom. And where's the seam? There, there's the seam. So that'll go on there like so. Like that. Inlet. Forces all that oil soaked. Um, air coming out of the engine and through this media where the oil has a chance to come on a suspension it dribbles into the bottom of the tank and the clean air comes out this and I have a um, like an old style small block Chevy crankcase vent that's gonna go on here I just ordered the uh, the little breather thing from eBay um, I got two types we'll use the one that fits this application the best and uh, when it's done we'll go reinstall it that might not happen until after Christmas though we'll see you then whoa there we go all painted up end up drilling these holes out a little bit bigger than quarter inch like two sizes more so I can just through bolt that I'm going to let this RTV skim up. Went down to the tractor supply. Got some uh, grade 8 nuts and bolts and some grade 3 washers because they don't have any grade 8 washers. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to use washers. We'll see. Probably not.
it's a week or so later. Yeah. What's happened since um, the last scene is uh, Christmas came. Um, Deb and I flew my folks from Mesa, Arizona out here. We haven't seen them in a couple of years. And uh, it was nice to spend five days with them. And then uh, after they left, we uh, kind of decompressed for half a day and then got in this turd and drove down to Corpus Christi on, on the Padre Island and spent a couple of days down there. Met Bussy McBusface. They've been camping out there for a minute or two. I didn't film anything with them. I didn't want to impose on, on their uh, beach time. So, and plus I had my whole herd. So, it just didn't seem like the proper time and place. Maybe that'll come up soon. Let's see how my uh, puke tank worked out. It's been parked here for a little bit. You can see some oil leak in here. Where's that coming from? Oh, looks like the front. Something on the front's leaking. Front main seal? Swell. <laughs> I'll have to pull them freaking harmonic balance or albums. And of course I got some leaks down there. Transmission's probably leaking. But look at this. Nice. That's just gunk that's been flying around in here. That's not leaking at all. Oh, there's a little bit there, but it's doing its job. Here's the best part. There's a little, oh, that's for my finger, dummy. I think that's probably mostly from the transmission and the front main seal. I still have some oil leak issues, mostly on this side now. I bet you this is from the transmission. On the drive back, I intentionally pushed it to 70, trying to get the thing to puke a little bit of oil. It does, but it's a far cry better than it was last time, yeah? I'm gonna call that a success. And now, the only thing I need to do is the never-ending journey of deferred maintenance. Do another oil change. I gotta do a transmission oil change. Let's see, an oil change on this bus is seven and a half gallons of oil on a filter. That's about a hundred bucks right there. And then uh, transmission oil change is five gallons of oil at 50 bucks a gallon plus a filter. So about 300 bucks probably to do an oil, uh, oil change. And when I do those oil changes, I'll do an oil analysis. Those I think are, I forget how much they are, 16 bucks, something like that. Blackstone Labs. But uh, those front hubs, they need, they need to be serviced. I noticed when I filled up the driver's side that uh, that the gear oil is kind of um, contaminated. Probably water intrusion. So one of these days I'm going to have to go through the front end on this thing and probably get new seals. And based on, based on what I saw inside that oil reservoir on the driver's side, you're probably going to need bearings. But not today, Satan. Uh, so if you if you need to build a, uh, a catch can on steroids, I just showed you how. I built mine on material I had laying around. If you needed to buy a tank like that, you know, they're around $40 on eBay for just an air tank. And then uh, the, uh, the media I used was uh, scrub pads. I got those at the grocery store for, I think, a buck and a half for three. And I bought like $25 worth and the rest was just material I had laying around. So I didn't have very much into it. The sight glasses, they weren't really necessary, but they were cheap. Ball valve on the bottom to drain it. I mean, it's a pretty simple apparatus. You just need to have something inside there to have the oil that's in suspension condense against. If you found this video to be uh, informative, maybe entertaining, Smash the like button, share it with the vast social media network, comment down in the comment section. That feeds the algorithm. If you want to support the channel and you shop on Amazon, check the links in the description. And you can do all your Amazon shopping through any of those links down there. Either of the products that I feature in these videos or the gear that I use to make them. Uh, if you want to throw me a couple bucks, there's PayPal and Patreon if you want to support them monthly. Thank you in advance if you can do that. If you can't, probably means we're related. 
Subscribe if you haven't. Click the bell icon so you receive post notifications. And until next time, you have fun, stay safe, you straight, keep powder. Have a splendid day. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.